Let's talk about object iterators. Specifically, let's talk about object.keys, object.values, and object.entries. All three are supported by the majority of modern browsers. Beware Internet Explorer, you'll need a polyfill. And are incredibly useful. You should definitely add them to your toolbox. Why are they so useful? Well, because of the way the prototype chain works. You remember that, right? From JS Quick Hits 22 and JS Quick Hits 23? Well, if not, a quick reminder. When you create a new object, it automatically inherits certain properties from the prototype object. This is, in itself, super useful. It's why built-in methods like object.toString automatically work on new objects without you having to define the method each time. However, it's a bit of a double-edged sword because it's made iterating through a specific object's non-prototypal properties a bit of a pain. Let's start with some code, and I'll show you what I mean. Here's a constructor, which we also talked about in those prototype tutorials I mentioned. Now we're going to add a method to game's prototype, like this. And finally, we're going to create a new game using our constructor, like this. Cool. So now we've got data. Let's start doing stuff with it. The first thing to try is a simple for in loop to iterate over our new game. Let's save that and check it out. Whoops, we have a semicolon here, should be a comma. There we go, that works just fine, except it lists get sale price as a key. This is because for in lists prototypal methods. Sometimes that's valuable, but more often it's not. In this case, we don't want get sale price there because that's a function, and we're only interested in the data. Well, now we can use our object iterator methods to access it. Let's start with object.keys. Save this. And as you can see, we have an array with name and genre in it. Okay, so that's maybe not the most immensely useful code of all time, but it can often be really handy to have a list of an object's keys over which you can iterate. Here's a slightly more practical example. Save that and see how it looks. Now we have the three values that are strings. Still not the most necessary real-world code, but it works for a simple example. Of course, you're probably wondering why go through all that trouble to get the values when object.values exists? Good question. Let's do that instead, and while we're at it, we'll just show the values that are numbers, all on one line. That's it. Let's take a look. This should be type of... And there we go. Being able to produce iterable arrays of keys and values is so awesome. But let's not forget object.entries. That produces an array of arrays, specifically tiny key value arrays, like this. Take a look at that. As you can see, each entry is a two item array. Index zero is the key, index one is the value. Same deal all the way through. This becomes super useful when you pair it with array destructuring. So instead of having to access, say, entry 0 and entry 1, you can do this instead. Take a look at that. And we see each of our keys and values. These simple examples are just a glimpse into the utility of these tools. Imagine you're working on a JSON dataset that's bringing in thousands of user objects. Being able to quickly and efficiently iterate over their keys, values, or both would prove useful in a wide variety of scenarios. With these new object iterator methods, you have the power to do it. That's it for now. See you next week.